Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield back with the boys from G4. Congratulations, another sellout tour. Thank you very much. It's amazing. Yep, we're looking forward to it. Are you pleased? Blown away. Tell your face. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we like it, Mike. It's a bit, trying, it's a bit of a Mike trait, to be honest, <laughs> isn't it? We're really excited to be here. It's like Andy Murray. It's very much, I'm just really thrilled to be having my second child and running Wim- well, just one Wimbledon again. <laughs> is, Andy, is Andy Murray, in, fa- in fact, Russell Crowe? <laughs> <laughs> but you no, look like Andy mean, Murray when you, when you do that. That's weird. That's, you that's the kind of impressions. That's how it works. Congratulations. I mean, we speak about every six months and you do these tours. And who knew? I mean, it was one show that was meant to be it. And then it became a tour and then it became another tour. And now you're booking through 2019. It's remarkable. It's unbelievable just to know there's the support there. We were on the first series of The X Factor. Uh, we started off for a bit of fun as colleagues at Music College. We went on the show just to see what Simon Cowell thought. It led to us coming second, ignited a career we could have never dreamt of. And to reignite it now is really, really touching. And it's only because the support is still out there for G4. And that's just a wonderful, wonderful testament to what we do. One of my favourite things at Christmas is to come and see you in a cathedral. And we're here in Lincoln today, probably the greatest cathedral on earth. I mean, it's stunning, isn't it? It's amazing. It's huge. I think we could probably fit all the other venues we do in this one building. <laughs> Everywhere you turn, there's a new room. And each room is really beautiful in its own right. It's, it really does take your breath away. They've even managed to get a large organ up on the fourth floor, haven't they? I don't know how they did that. They have indeed. I mean, it must have been an incredible erection process to, to get the organ up there. Um, but it's a, it's a powerful beast. And uh, Jonathan copes with it very well actually mm-hmm. he's, uh, he's, he's very he's good with his hands on that they tell me they stuck it through the window that's how I normally do it really yeah <laughs> how's your fishing career going I don't need windows for it which is a good thing um, you graduated <laughs> away from windows <laughs> yeah, the only problem is you can't find a tackle anymore <laughs> <laughs> or indeed any fish which is <laughs> he's actually been doing a lot of fishing recently mainly for compliments actually mm. yeah Stop it's this. the wrong place for this kind of thing oh, oh god. god for god's sake <laughs> Gernard. Matt Damon. <laughs> Ray. Yeah. Are you still doing this nonsense? Yeah. No, I am. Like, fishing's great, honestly. Like, it is so relaxing. Look, we have a weird industry that we're in. We stand in front of people. We sing. We express our souls. We hope that we don't get tomatoes thrown at us. We leave. We sign stuff for people. You get in a van. You kind of fall asleep. You stay in a glamorous travel lodge as we are in this. Look, we we love what we do, but it's nice to then escape from that and do something totally different. And I've got two young children now, very fortunate, uh, Sienna and Dexter, six and three, and we get to do that together as well. We go sit on the little lakes side or go by the sea and you catch a fish. Dex is desperate to catch a great white shark. Now he's seen a movie with a great white shark and he's like, Daddy, take me and catch one of them. Look, it's so exciting to have... Did you show a three-year-old Jaws? Jaws. (laughs) (laughs) It was in some document. I think it was the new Blue Planet 2. No, the Blue Planet 2. We were watching the advert for that and he was like, can we go catch one of them, Daddy? And it's kind of the wrong reason you should be watching the Blue Mm -hmm. Planet, not to catch the wonderful beings that have been captured on that for the last seven years. The most amazing footage. But it is escapism. It's wonderful to do. And do you know what? It's the best adrenaline rush. It even surpasses the ovations we get at the end of Ness and Dorma, catching a massive fish. I have oh. to say, it's amazing. It might, have been, it might have actually been Baywatch. It was <laughs> John, if you, if you catch a great white shark, can you let me know? Oh, oh dear me. But presumably you're hoping that that's what it feels like because you haven't obviously yet caught anything like that. Or indeed, you know what? I have. Just check out the Twitter feed. There's all the little pictures there of me holding all sorts of prize fish. I love it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah you've got really good with Photoshop recently. Haven't you? <laughs> Unless he's more with the Twitter, if you know what I'm saying, Jonathan. <laughs> How's this tour going? I mean, we're here today in this huge Goliath of a place and it's sold out. It seems to me you've found your rhythm. I mean, the Christmas thing helped because I think it made us realise how great your voices are because there's not much to this show other than you four guys and you pull it off. That's amazing. Yeah, I think we like to do something very different from what we call the main tour, which in theatres, town halls, um, and this is really stripped back with beautiful buildings. They don't really need a set. It's stunning. And I think because, you know, when we were all kids, we used to sing in these buildings and and got an affinity with them. So it's great to do that and really go back to our roots, I think, and um, bring that four-part harmony into these buildings. As people tell you on Twitter when we put these interviews out, you always seem relaxed as if this is okay. I mean, you've got thousands of people waiting for you across the country. You're hanging out with the punters just before. This is home to you now, really, isn't it? I mean, especially for you, the newest member, you're completely at home. I'm not that new anymore, sadly. Uh, three years old in G4 years. <laughs> I were, I, I, it's a great thing to go and meet them all, actually. It just kind of makes you able to connect a bit more. And actually, I suppose we probably relax a bit more when we see, see people before the show, and it's, especially 
especially something like this, a Christmas thing, which is always like a community vibe for any Christmas show. And you don't want that, that divide between audience and performers at all. And it's just lovely to, to, to engage with people in that way. And the Oh Holy Night moment, which is the bit we all look forward to, I presume that is in the show tonight. Oh, no. Oh, no. God, no, we're I'm doing, going home already. Doing, let's, pretend, let's pretend it is for a second. <laughs> let's pretend. We're doing Unholy Day, I'm afraid. This time. Sorry. That's my favourite, actually. I prefer that more. When you get to that moment at the sort of end of the night when they're all waiting for it, are you even nervous that you're not going to reach that top note? Because it seems like it's just fun to you guys. You make it look too easy. I remember a friend of mine um, who, who's a singer as well. They said really recently, they said that well, you know, somebody asked them what they think about when they're singing. Um, and this, you don't think about anything. And it's because of the practice that we've done and we've worked really really hard we do uh, behind the scenes work really hard at stuff to make sure that like no stones left unturned so we have a lot of fun on stage we enjoy ourselves and sometimes we take the mickey out of each other and all sorts of things but underpinning that is a lot of hard work that we do to make sure that we try and make our voices and everything as reliable reliable as it can be mm. with this show as you mentioned before there are no gimmicks there's nothing no trickery there's no heavy production it is four voices guitar piano organ we've got nothing to hide behind but then at the same time we've got all to express and it's a really wonderful position to be stood with mutual friends singing songs that we love for people at Christmas time it genuinely is that wonderful thing to do I, I couldn't I couldn't wish for a better show to be a part of it's I, fun uh, when we were we were rehearsing earlier with the kids choir and when they started blaring in on one of the songs I can't remember what it was, I was that for me is that sound I mean I, I hate the term but the sound of Christmas is uh, is that huge kids choir I've got like 80 kids tonight and it, they just make such a like joyous noise and that's that sort of signifies Christmas to me when I was a kid um, my godmother she's very um, very staunch Catholic, very religious, and she used to um, bribe us all, all of us, to go into a midnight mass and sing in the choir. And she used to bribe us all with a major fee of a KFC. <laughs> was how it worked. <laughs> so we go, we go to KFC about seven o'clock, and that was our payment for going to church in the evening. It's not changed ever since. It's that. not it's really. G4. No, exactly. <laughs> there have been quite a few KFC stops along the way. So it's, it's lovely that you guys make me feel at home in that way. It's nice. It's right. I quite like to finger the boneless bucket. What's your favourite thing? There's this new thing called the double down. We tried it, and it's like two chicken breasts. There's no bread. So there's two chicken breasts with like all the horrible stuff in the middle. Are you like. sure you weren't on some mucky website? What is it called again? <laughs> it's called the Double Down. And two breasts. I've seen the advert for that. Does that not come in a bun as well? It, there's no bun. Because it literally spins around on no, the screen. It, it, the, the bun is the two bits of chicken. No way. That's what it is. It's got all the bacon and, and cheese. Donald's have got a lot to learn, haven't yeah. they? Last time I went, there was just an empty box. Because there was a hole in my bucket. Were you? Oh. I was going to say. I was going to say. Were you, did you go with John? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> he just breathed it in. <laughs> like, gone. <laughs> What's your life like when you're not together? I mean, we know for the next month you're almost every single night doing a gig, and then you'll have a couple of months off, and then you're back together. What do you like to do when you're not together, performing as G4? It's really nice, actually, when we're not together. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time you've ever smiled in this interview, Mike. <laughs> I'm happy now, which is good. <laughs> I remind when, you, this will all be over in a month. Yeah, when, yeah, when do we finish? Uh, no, it's really nice. I think that's what keeps a really healthy balance. When we were together back in the day, it was just G4 24-7. We never got away from each other. And um, we've all got exciting projects we do individually. And we have that hunger. But it means when we come back together, we've got more to offer to the table. And we're just excited to do it and, and enjoy it much more. And do you like, I mean, going off doing your own stuff and then coming back, is that fun for you, Jonathan? Absolutely. No, it's a really exhilarating thing to have those solo projects. And I'm collaborating with Ridian and we're doing a great tour May, June next year, the musicals. And it's a really fun opportunity to kind of have that in the back burner, be thinking about repertoire for that in and amongst a show with G4. And it's like, this is our mainstay. This is the main thing that we're a part of. And I think it's something that we all feel at home doing. But at the same time, we've all got aspirations. We've all got the literature we want to scratch, as Mike says in the past. And it's, uh, it's it's exciting to have that opportunity. I think it's really important for any artist to, to try a variety of things and spend their time working with lots of different people in different styles and formats because then it, you learn totally different skills and it brings everything to the, to the table when you're, when you're doing other things. I think it's really important to not get stuck down one, one path because then you just get bored as well. Well, I'm hoping to be a giraffe in The Lion King from January, so wish me luck with that audition. How's your, how's, how, I was going to say, how's the audition going? It's marvellous. They, yeah. they, they were looking for a long pink thing with spots yeah. and uh, I was oh, hoping... Perfect, that, though. I, <laughs> It'll be it's, ideal. It's, it's, very, it's very bold of you to stick your neck out. <laughs> very good. It's a tall order. The tour next year. So this one's almost sold out. So there's no point plugging that really, is there? No, not really. It's mad. Well, we're back on tour in March, believe right. it or not. Um, and that's um, also September, actually. We, we tend to do our main tour in March and September. That's theatres, town halls. We're doing about... 22 uh, in March, something like that. I think it's something... 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, across across, across the whole month. There's, there's yeah. an island as well. Yeah, the thing for me with that mm. tour, we've had some long titles for tours. Our name used to be the Guildhall School of Music and Drama Barbershop Quartet. It became G4, and uh, and this tour I have to say I love because it's just got live underneath the G4. I can spell the whole thing, and I've not got it you wrong sure? at any point. Are you sure? Honestly, yeah, you did call it G4 Live. The other day. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it called G4 Live? <laughs> I'll give you that. That's the line of the night, yeah. boys. I'm going to let you go. You do on in about 15 minutes. Congratulations with everything and your continued success. You can find out more at g4official.com, is that right? Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Have a great show. Please stick in my favourite at the end and come and see me in The Lion King. It's going to be a big opening. Wow. I'm sure it is. That's oh, what I've heard. Be. Very I'm impressive. I'm going to use Massive. the uh, binoculars that they have there and I'll enjoy the original. Yeah. Goodbye. So you can see the circle of life. <laughs>